Li Ka-shing undoubtedly has a net worth of over $30 billion. Asia's richest man shocks investors with his proposed bid for British mobile phone operator O2. From a quiet refugee boy working in a plastics factory to making a multi-billion dollar empire out of several companies, the Asian Superman is still one of the wealthiest men in both Asia and the entire world. But what makes him stand out among the rich and powerful people is that he neither inherited his fortune nor did he acquire it through the invention of new technology, as many billionaires that we know today. Instead, he increased his wealth by steadily outperforming the market with his astute investment strategies. So how exactly did he accomplish this, where so many others have struggled and given up? What did he do differently? This is his story. Unfortunately, Li Ka Shing's father passed away when he was just a teenager. Even though Li wasn't up to 10 years old when he started junior high school, he had to drop out of school and get a job in the plastics factory to support his family. You see, his family was so financially strapped that he had to auction off his late father's clothing to buy groceries. He spent 16 hours a day making plastic watch bands while his peers went to school. You must be up to some targets and, well, strong enough to be working that much. Well, the dream is accomplished. With a total net worth of $34 billion, really, he has been a billionaire for over 25 years because of some exceptionally savvy investments. As a true rags to riches success story, Li Ka Shing's incredible wealth and power is a truly inspiring and classic example of the American dream in action. Born in Xiaozhou, Guangdong, China, on June 13, 1928, when Li was in elementary school, the Japanese frequently bombed Xiaozhou. As a result, his family fled to Hong Kong. Li's father was a school principal who tragically passed away from tuberculosis not long after the family had moved to their new adopted country and had become established there. It's important to note that Lee also had tuberculosis at this time, so he was profoundly affected by the isolation he experienced during this period of recovery, as well as the extreme poverty and feelings of helplessness. Before he turned 15, the future magnate had to deal with the war, the death of a parent, a serious illness, and poverty, which gave him a lifelong drive to succeed. By the time he was 15 years old, he had a full-time job in a plastics trading company, which greatly assisted in providing for his family. At the age of 22, Lee left his job to launch his own manufacturing company of plastic toys, and by the age of 28, he had purchased his first house. Later, he changed the company's plans and started making plastic flowers because he had heard how well-liked they were in Italy. It was Lee's first smart commercial move. He gave the business the name Chun Kong. This company today is one of the biggest real estate investment firms in the world today, having emerged from the past. Is cash flow the most important thing for yeah, Chun Kong? It's the most, most important thing. I have been in the past many years. In 1950, I started to do it. Well, that's how you found Lee understands very well that the world changes a lot. So he always takes any opportunity without delay. Then, he is most careful of his cash flow. He's so smart that he cherishes the power of knowledge. He would always buy and read books about any industry he wants to invest in. During the period of severe social unrest marked by the Maoist-led riots and bombings, Lee was able to purchase real estate at steep discounts with every penny he had saved. By the time the market recovered from the social instability, Lee started to make a killing. You see, Lee doesn't gamble with his investment strategies. He would always be certain about the market fluctuations before he makes a purchase. In 1979, 
he became the first Chinese citizen to acquire a controlling stake in an old British trading house, Hutchinson Wempoa. And do you think that this is the only investment Lee Cashing owns in the UK? No. In fact, acquiring Hutchinson was just a start for Lee. There's a big reason why Lee Cashing is seen as someone who has bought half of the UK. He had used one of his investment strategies to match down this company because Hutchinson and Poa had been struggling for years. Lee cleverly convinced Hong Kong and Shanghai Bank, HSBC, to sell him their 22% stake in the company for less than half the book value. Hutchinson Wempoa owned shipyards, docks, vast parcels of retail space, and much more, mainly throughout Hong Kong. Over the next decade, Lee managed to successfully turn Hutchinson Wempoa around and expand its empire throughout the world. Today, Hutchinson Wempoa is one of the most valuable companies in the world, with annual revenues of over $50 billion. Many media houses speculated that Li Ka-shing paid 4.6 billion pounds for Green King because he wanted to cash in on Britain's Brexit and make a big purchase. Green King is a true veteran of the British bar industry. Having opened in 1799, many people believe that the main reason Li Ka-shing made a profit was because, for 4.6 billion pounds, he also purchased the real estate properties owned by the Green King in addition to the stable bar business, an outstanding brand value. Many of Green King's pubs can be found in the heart of bustling British neighborhoods. Together with other buildings like wineries and hotels, it occupies a space of about 70 million square feet, or about 7 million square meters. In other words, Lee did not merely acquire the Green King company. He also acquired a number of prime parcels through this deal. He always followed the phrase, invest where there is a return. Lee Cashing is known for his bold, forward-thinking investment approach. He began his buy-by-buy strategy in the United Kingdom in the 1990s, expanding his holdings in the country's water, electricity, natural gas infrastructure, ports, retail, transportation, communications, and real estate markets. Just as everyone was thinking Lee Cashing had hit it big with his latest investment of 4.6 billion pounds, it became clear that he had actually bought nearly half of Britain. The port was the first piece of Lee's massive investment empire, once nicknamed the money printing machine, to be established in the United Kingdom. From 1991 to 1998, Lee Cashing invested in not one, but three major ports in the United Kingdom. The port of Felix, though, the largest specialized container port in the United Kingdom, located 35 miles outside of London, and the London Thames port, one of the busiest ports in the United Kingdom, and the port of an integrated port located in the east of England. In 2010, Lee made his largest acquisition to date when he paid $9.1 billion for UK power networks. As a result, Lee is now the primary supplier of electricity for about 8 million Britons. With the purchase of Northumbrian water in 2011, Lee now supplies potable water to 4.5 million English citizens and sewage disposal to another 2.7 million UK citizens. As a result of his many acquisitions, he is now one of the UK's largest owners of infrastructure assets. With a quarter of the electricity distribution market, 30% of the natural gas supply market, and 7% of the water supply market under his control, he made a hasty but significant impact on the British communications and transportation sectors as he entered the infrastructure industry here. The dividends of his investments in the UK's infrastructure, communications, and transportation are estimated to be £1 billion annually, or nearly 40% of the total revenue. When asked about his special affection for the United Kingdom, he said that the high rate of return and stability of UK investment projects are the two main factors. Many investors, including Lee Ka-shing, to take advantage of the bargains available in the UK real estate market, as a result of the decline in the value of the pound sterling during the Brexit policy, there was an increase of over 150% in housing investment in Britain last year, with a total amount reaching 6.8 billion euros, according to the most recent report, 7.6 billion pounds. Particularly, real estate investment in London has increased to the balance of 2. billion euros, nearly doubling since 2017. If you look close enough, you'll find some traces of Li Ka-shing everywhere. 
His business strategy is diversification. He acquires dying companies and invests early on where there is return. When Lee's tech stake fails, he has to accept the losses himself. He treats the Lee Ka Shing Foundation, which he founded like a third son, and funnels windfalls from his tech investments into it. More than $1.6 billion, mostly to schools, has been donated by the foundation. He has provided the initial $690 million needed to establish Shantou University. His $40 million donation helped fund a brand new biochemical research building at Berkeley. After starting out as a factory worker, Lee Cashing became a full-fledged billionaire by 1987. In the same year, Lee and his business partners dished out $500 million to purchase roughly half of Husky Oil, a struggling Canadian oil company that had been through numerous mergers and restructurings and was still losing money. This purchase literally could not have come at a better time. One barrel of oil cost about $10 at the time of the purchase. In the subsequent 30 years, from 10 to 30 to 50 to $140. With the price of oil at $88 per barrel today, Husky Energy is bringing in over $25 billion annually. By selling off most of his shares, Lee still owns a chunk of the business, giving him access to over $8 billion. Lee put his money into property in many other sectors. It's fair to say that Lee maintains considerable influence over Hong Kong from the comfort of his tower. His companies control a large portion of the city's port traffic, as well as holdings in the city's electric and mobile phone providers. Outside of the real estate industry, however, Lee Cashing has demonstrated extraordinary foresight in the technological arena. After considering Facebook for only a few minutes, he dropped $120 million into it in late 2007. Do not forget that Facebook's revenue was extremely low in 2007. MySpace had only recently expanded its membership beyond university students when it became a financial disaster for Rupert Murdoch's News Corporation. Having a 0.8% stake in Facebook is now worth $900 million. In 2005, when Skype was still losing money, he put money into the company. When eBay finally decided to buy it a year later, they did so for $2.5 billion. Siri which was developed with Lee's help and acquired by Apple in 2010, was a number of Lee's stakes. Lee has put a lot of money into companies like Spotify, Waze, and HZO. Also, after he invested in Spotify, he reportedly told the company that it had to be available in his car. In 2009, Spotify did not yet have a mobile app. Lee's investments in the tech industry are a shining example of his ability to see not just where the industry is, but where it's headed. He is confident in revolutionary innovations and technology. Technology such as Facebook, Waze, Siri, etc. People started referring to Lee ka -shing as Superman because of how wisely he invests. Thank you for listening. If you enjoyed the video, kindly like and subscribe to support the channel. Until the next one, stay safe.